All right, so today we're going to be doing a wrap up and I'll be wrapping up four books that are by Caribbean authors about the Caribbean experience. So for my thesis, as some of you might know, I'm focusing on Islam in the Caribbean and uh, the first book I have to talk about is actually a book that I read for school. And it is called Far From Mecca, Globalizing the Muslim Caribbean by Alia Khan. This is a really comprehensive overview of Islam and Muslim communities in the region, with a particular focus on Trinidad, Guyana, and Jamaica. Um, Alia Khan is looking at the experiences of both Afro and Indo-Caribbean Muslims. The history as well as the contemporary experience, and she is predominantly doing so through literary analysis. So she's analyzing a bunch of different texts, poems, novels, songs that all allude to the presence of Islam in the region. I don't want to spend too long talking about it because it's a book that I read for school, but I absolutely enjoyed it. It's one of the best books that I've read for my thesis so far. It's definitely an essential text for me, and it's just so well put together and well researched. If you are in any shape or form, I'm interested in studying the experiences of Muslims in the Caribbean, this is like a foundational text that you do not want to skip like at all. I love that it contributes to the field of global Islamic studies as well as Caribbean studies as well as diasporic studies partic particularly for like South Asian and African diasporas and I love that it connects all of those fields in a way that we don't usually see those fields connecting and so I just really appreciate the existence of this book. If you want to know more of my detailed thoughts I did write a Goodreads review so I'll link that down below but other than that this is a great book and I'm happy that I finally got around to finish Finishing it. I also have been thinking about doing my own literary analysis, maybe. I'm not quite sure if I actually want to, but I have been reading some uh, fiction, some Caribbean fiction that feature Muslim characters and Muslim experiences, just for the sake of kind of seeing what's out there and maybe entertaining the possibility of probably doing a literary analysis. So one of the first books that I picked up for that is called A Death in the Family by Ryan Shah. Ryan Shah is the author of A Silent Life, which was one of my favorite books of last year, so I definitely had to read something else by her. And A Death in the Family is a really interesting story. It takes place in Guyana and it follows a family, particularly these three siblings, after the death of their father. When he dies, it causes a lot of introspection in his three children who all had very complicated relationships with him. He was a loving father. He took care of them after their mother passed away and he did everything he could for them and he genuinely loved and cared for them as any father should. But he was also extremely patriarchal and a bit overbearing and had really, really stringent and, uh, you know, unfair expectations of all of his children. And whenever they disappointed him, he made them feel that. So in addition to being a loving father, he was also quite dictatorial and unreasonable in his expectations that he had for his children. So it's about them sort of reflecting on their relationship on him. And it's really a book that kind of tries to understand this character who we don't really get to meet in the story because he's dead, right? We only get to hear about him in flashbacks. But it's a story that kind of tries, tries to analyze this character and his true complexity as an older Indo-Caribbean Muslim man. And so I really appreciated the cultural context and the intersection with masculinity that was explored in this story. I didn't love this as much as A Silent Life. I felt like the writing in this book was a lot weaker because one of the things that I loved about A Silent Life was Ryan Shah's writing style. I, I thought it was okay. It, it was definitely a story where I found that it was interesting. I was very much invested in these characters and their lives and what they were going through. And it's definitely a book that I will return to and I will go back to and reference and, and appreciate because of what it brings to the table in terms of like representation and whatnot. But at the same time, it's one of those books where when I close it, I just didn't feel like picking it back up. You know, it was not a very engaging story. It isn't plot driven at all. In fact, I would argue that there's really no plot. It's it's a story about these characters, which is fine. I can enjoy and be engaged by a character driven story. But this is one of those character driven stories that didn't really have that pull factor for me. So it took me a while to finish it, but I'm ultimately glad that I did finish it. And it is definitely one that uh, will stick with me for a long time. The next book that I picked up is called Chinese Woman by Jan Lo Shinebon. And this takes place in two time periods in like the 1960s Guyana and early 2000s Britain. It follows a, a Indo-Guyanese Muslim guy by the name of Albert Aziz who is who, who, who suffers an accident at a very young age which leaves him uh, disabled and because of that and the fact that he is Indian and the fact that he's Muslim 
he feels as though as if he is disempowered by the wider Guyanese society around him. He has a huge resentment for other races, especially black people, and he also has a huge resentment for Hindus who he feels excludes the, the Muslims from the Indian experience or whatnot. In addition to that, he also develops this really weird, like, fetishistic fascination for these uh, two Chinese women that he meets in his childhood and teenage years. The fact that those women also end up rejecting him also plays into this sort of inferiority complex that he's kind of struggling with. So fast forward to the early 2000s we're following him as he becomes involved in like uh, terrorist organizing. I, uh, this book is really weird. I, th that's the best way I could put it. I honestly just felt like this is the type of story that had something going for it. Like, I feel like the author definitely knew what she wanted to talk about, but it was so short. Like, this book is less than 100 pages long. I just feel like it was not able to execute what it was trying to do properly. I think a story about, you know, masculinity and about a man, you know, feeling disempowered because of his own circumstances or identity or life situation or whatnot, and that sort of influencing him to end up, like, joining a terrorist, you know, organizing or whatnot for the sake of finding that masculine superiority that he always felt entitled to but never quite was able to achieve. I think that's an interesting concept to explore. And it's definitely something that is worthy of exploring because, you know, it's not that, you know, all Muslim men end up getting involved in terrorism or anything like that, but some do. And there have been examples and instances of Muslim men in the Caribbean who have been usurped into that kind of thing. And so I think having a novel that explores the, 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 the push and pull factors of that, why that might be a thing, how that's tied to masculinity and disempowerment, I think that's a really interesting thing to explore. But this book... I just feel like it was too short to really execute that with the nuance required. And yeah, it just felt very disjointed. The organization of the book was like, it, it didn't quite make sense to me. And I don't know, I just feel like had this been like a hundred pages longer, it would have probably been able to, 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 to do what it was trying to do, but in a much better way. Okay, <laughs> last two books that I have to talk about are both, um, kind of poetry and here's the thing with me and poetry y'all I don't understand poetry it does not make sense to me so um I struggled with both of these books but I still managed to appreciate them the first one is called Everyone Knows I Am A Hunting by Shivani Ramluchan who I actually know personally um she was in a previous video that I did where I was visiting different independent bookstores in Trinidad she works at one of the bookstores and I purchased this book that particular day and she signed it for me so um thank you so much Shivani she's such a sweetheart and I'm so I was so excited to finally get around to reading this because I've been wanting to read it for a while it's essentially a collection of poems about womanhood and being an Indian woman in the Caribbean and and what that means and how that kind of informed Shivani's own life I guess a lot of the poems in here I couldn't quite like understand except there was like the middle section it was a little bit more apparent to me what she was talking about but other parts of the collection I didn't really quite understand like what the poems were about, what they were referring to, um, but I still really enjoyed them because Shivani's choice of words and her writing style is just utterly beautiful and stunning. I absolutely enjoyed reading the words itself, even if I didn't quite know what was happening. I felt a little dumb <laughs> when I was reading this because I was like, should I be able to understand it? But then I was speaking to one of my friends who is also a poet. He was telling me that, you know, poetry is not always meant to be understood, but it is always meant to be felt. And when he said that, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely felt this collection. I definitely felt the emotion uh, because of the way that Shivani uses her words, because of the way that she structures her sentences, because of the the breaks in, in the, the lines as well. I can kind of tell where it's coming from in a, from an emotional perspective, even if I couldn't quite understand the references. And I guess that's what poetry is about, you know, it's kind of about understanding where the author is coming from and not always about understanding what they are trying to say because emotion itself is is a language right and i i, I definitely connected with it on that level 
it's definitely one of those collections where I think I might have to keep revisiting it and I feel like poetry is a thing where you kind of need to revisit it to really understand you know what's going on and what's happening. The last collection um, is not really a collection of poems it is a collection of prose vignettes but they are very poetic in their writing so maybe this is what people would classify as prose poetry I don't know but this is a Jamaica Kincaid book it's called At the Bottom of the River and I got this from uh, another used bookstore that I talked about in that same video and funnily enough when I opened the book I found that it's signed by Jamaica Kincaid how cool is that so as I said about at the bottom of the river is a collection of different vignettes that explore different things I honestly can't really remember what most of it was about because I had a hard time sort of retaining what was going on in the stories it was such a weird reading experience because like one line would be something and then the next paragraph something totally completely different was happening it meandered a lot and it lost me at times but the only positive thing I can say about this book was that I enjoyed the writing. I think Kincaid's writing style is beautiful. I just didn't know what the fuck she was saying. <laughs> and there you have it. Those are um, some five really short uh, West Indian reads that I read recently. Um, <laughs> hopefully this month before the end of the year I could read some more interesting stuff and uh, have a final wrap-up that might hopefully, you know, have some more substantive, sub, sub I can't say that fucking word, substantive. Sub is it substantive? Substantial. Yeah, let's just go with that for now. Hopefully I'll have a wrap up with some more substantial reviews at the end of this month. We'll see what, what happens. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video in the comments down below. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books. You probably haven't, but if you have, I'd love to know if you have any thoughts on them. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. And until next time, inshallah, keep reading.